One Piece was on the cover of the magazine this week, with the last thing Saturn saw before meeting Blackbeard's crew. This week's color spread features a bunch of our favorite One Piece ladies celebrating with some dogs. And Sanji's sister Reiju clearly has similar tastes to her lover boy brother. To kick off chapter 1108, a man cried out as Egghead Island continued to be destroyed. Karabu was on his knees and pleading for Von Auger not to shoot him. Katarina Devon wondered who the guy was. Von Auger recognized the fanboy, and the mud man confirmed his identity. Although the man was a pirate, Blackbeard's personal sniper remained cautious. They were on a government island after all. Still refusing to lower his weapon, Von Auger mentioned how there are plenty of people who want to see their leader die. But Swampface continued to beg for their trust. In fact, he was bold enough to claim that killing him would only seal their fates when Blackbeard finds out. Von Auger decided to let the man explain himself, but didn't take his sights off of him. Karubu claims to have extremely valuable and difficult to obtain information that Blackbeard would certainly appreciate. More specifically, he had secret knowledge on two of the ancient weapons. Poseidon in the form of Princess Shirahoshi of Fishman Island, and Pluton, which is dormant in Wano. Now with their interest and a bit more confidence, a smiling Karibu again told them to bring him to Blackbeard. He would happily provide the information without compensation. He was certain that this would please his hero. The hesitance was still written on the two captains' faces while Karibu repeated himself. But of course we can assume that they go along with this. Elsewhere, the marines continued to struggle against the suddenly treacherous pacifista units. There was an order for them to move away from the shore. They could not afford to continue their cannon fire. We'd soon see why as a Mark III pacifista defended against their bombardment with a bubble shield. As a reminder, this technology is like a combat application of the bubble ship coating that Saba Odi is well known for. Considering how connected that arc is to this one, it's a really clever touch by Oda. The marines were in total dismay. They were now experiencing the true power of the special science group firsthand. The pacifista were merciless as the destruction of marine ships continued, perhaps finally being able to execute orders that they themselves desire. Oda has been emphasizing their expressions these last three chapters. This more than likely has something to do with the extra buccaneer racial feature that Dr. Vegapunk considered. Vice Admiral Bluegrass was infuriated. She wanted to go all out but destroying the pacifista would be a severe blow to justice as a whole. After all, they confidently removed the warlord system because they were so sure that Dr. Vegapunk's technology would be more than enough power. From there, we finally begin to receive names for some of the unnamed marines. Vice Admiral Hound considered the possibility of calling off the buster call. Something like that has never happened before, but it might be necessary. That would be a historic L for the Marines, personally delivered by the Yonko, Straw Hat Luffy. Vice Admiral Guillotine reminded them all that Dr. Vegapunk himself gave the pirate jewelry Bonnie the power to control the pacifista. He refused to back down. They needed to deal with this issue sooner rather than later. Calling the good doctor Rebel Filth, he insisted that they prioritize regaining control over the cybernetic weapons. Vice Admiral Doberman simplified their course of action to be the swift execution of Kuma's daughter. All of the Vice Admirals will now be leaving their posts to hunt the criminal down. Fortunately for them, they know that the direction of her escape from the middle of the Fabrio Stratum would take her to the northeastern coast. As the importance of this task was emphasized yet again, yet another Marine began his jaunt forward. Vice Admiral Tosa let his comrades know that he was in hot pursuit of the target. Doing the whole overconfident background character bit, Tosa was certain of his barehanded success. He was very proud of his armor-piercing 10-barrel Shigon. So instead of the standard finger pistol, this was to be a finger shotgun. And its name is Tosa Crunch. Yeah, I could totally go for some cereal right now. Did you guys know that One Piece had a collaboration with Kellogg's in Japan? Anyways, Bonnie and Frankie were shocked but their attention quickly shifted to what was casting a shadow over the bearded marine. In the next moment, Tosa was no more. Bonnie cried out in horror. Frankie was surprised to see giants on the island and wondered if they were friends or foes, but he was much more concerned about their punctuality. From there, a familiar laugh rumbled out along with a question about their identities. Our old friends Dory and Brogy were the ones who planted Tosa like a seedling. Brogy admitted that they studied the Straw Hat bounty posters. That way, they would be able to recognize any members that joined after their original encounter. And because none of them lined up, he wondered if they were researchers. Which reminds me that thankfully, these guys were able to save the Egghead researcher ship from being destroyed. 
Dory let them know that they'd come to Egghead to pick up the Straw Hats. Frankie responded by claiming Luffy as his captain. He wondered if these guys had some sort of problem with him. Brogy happily said that they only feel gratitude towards the guy. Dory introduced them as warriors of Elbath. If they were Luffy's friends, they would extend their protection to them too. Bonnie quickly responded that Luffy, Sanji, and Dr. Vegapunk were still in the center of the island. Then she asked if they could help them too. And just their names were enough to make Brogy feel nostalgic. They were more than happy to oblige. Dory turned to him to confirm that Dr. Vegapunk was a man that a certain scholar mentioned to them. And we can assume that they are talking about Robin's old friend, Saul. Their crewmates happily obliged. Seeing that these giants were friendly, Frankie wondered if the two captains were the so-called masters Usopp was always raving about. Vice Admiral Urban, who doesn't look like any kind of Urban I know, told the others that Tosa's connection was lost. Vice Admiral Pomsky wondered if the targets were able to launch a counterattack or if it was the giants. Either way, he would be getting in on the action too. Bluegrass told Vice Admiral Dahl to join her in attacking from the sea. Using her Nori Nori Devil Fruit powers, the elderly marine took control of a mechanized sea beast. Dahl was sure that the ship on the northeast shore was from Elbath. Bluegrass lamented their bad luck, since giants were nothing to be played with. She wondered if Vice Admiral Dahl had ever faced one in combat. After lighting up, Dahl admitted that her commanding officer more than 20 years ago was a giant. So yeah, she has been in the game for a while now. Seeing as this was in the past tense, Bluegrass realized that Dahl was talking about Saul, someone she knew to be one hell of a marine. The giant crewmates asked where the other Straw Hats were. Frankie shared that they are in the lab above the clouds. The giant was actually familiar with the concept of Sky Islands, but Frankie had to correct him since it wasn't exactly that. Sky Islands being casual knowledge to one of them is enough to reinforce the notion that the giants of Elbap probably have a lot of lost knowledge. Meanwhile, St. Saturn wasn't finished fighting. Sanji wondered how they'd be able to save Dr. Vegapunk if he couldn't move. Crying out in pain, the scientist made it clear that if Sanji tries to move him, he would die from internal hemorrhaging. Saturn now revealed himself to be in a far more monstrous form. He appears to be more spider-like than ever. This is far more in line with the original concept of awakened Zoan Fruit users that we were introduced to in Impel Down. And as Luffy dropped down, Sanji reminded the doctor that it is their mission to get him off the island. Despite this, Dr. Vegapunk accepted his fate. He also believed that there were still things on Egghead Island that he needed to protect. But it's not like he's in any shape to be protecting anything. He wanted to keep Bonnie's command override of the pacifistas a secret until she was older. From now on, she would be a top priority target for the world government and potentially others. So now, Vegapunk wants them to look after her. Yeah, Bonnie for the Straw Hats all the way. Sanji recognized that St. Saturn had completely abandoned his human traits. Particularly, there was an odd look in his eyes. Not to mention the fact that his body was now completely toxic. As Sanji lifted Vegapunk despite his warnings, Luffy casually dodged the elders now whip-like appendages. Luffy insisted that Sanji do his job and make sure Vegapunk makes it out of here no matter what. Vegapunk continued to wail in agony as Sanji insisted that they'd figure things out. But in the next moment, he was being kicked in the face by Kizaru. Yeah, the power of love is not overcoming that one. And much to his horror, Kizaru successfully pierced the good doctor with his saber of light. This man Sanji had one job. I tried to gas this man up last week and his stocks have already plummeted into the dirt. Somebody tell this fool to stay in the kitchen because he is definitely not cooking in the field. Sanji could only cry out in dismay as the world's favorite scientist crashed to the ground. Kizaru then provided us with a shaded expression. Now let's be real here. Pretty much any One Piece fan can tell you that this series is no stranger to fake out deaths. We know that Kizaru's light has a burning effect to it. There is no doubt in my mind that this well-placed attack was truly an attempt to cauterize Vegapunk's wound and aid in his survival. If this was truly a fatal attack, Kizaru's expression would have given us a whole lot more. However, this was sold really well, so even Luffy was concerned. He told Sanji to get his act together and leave, while Mr. Four apologized to a passed out Vegapunk. Kizaru began turning his body into light, but before he could, Luffy became massive with a very serious look on his face. He palmed Saturn's face like a basketball and clutched Kizaru tighter than a toddler holding a new Barbie doll. From there, we would get another look at Saturn's strange eyes. 
staring directly into them with a sinister smile on his face. Luffy let them know that there was no way he was letting them escape. This is more goat talk than Sengoku leaving the mic on with his pet in the room. This is one hell of a thing to say when that's supposed to be their objective. Kizaru was just gushing blood by this point. I need you guys to realize that time limit aside, Luffy has not been pushed by anyone in this arc. This is the man that defeated Kaido. Every time he's used Gear 5, Luffy has taken it to a whole new level. It might as well be a new transformation every time we see it. But while Luffy played King Kong in the background, Sanji continued to beg Vegapunk not to die. A beeping sound could be heard in the distance as he wondered what the doctor could possibly be smiling about. After that, we would see the source of the beeping. A pre-recorded Den Den Mushi broadcast began. Vegapunk started warming up on the screen. This was a message addressed to the entire world. Seeing as a lot of people wouldn't recognize him based on his appearance alone, Dr. Vegapunk properly introduced himself. Although, claiming to be humble while also calling yourself the world's greatest scientific genius is a bit funny. He knew that what he was about to say would be shocking, but asked them all to listen anyways. For what he was about to tell them all was the truth about their world. Oh my goodness, it is finally happening! As if the Egghead incident was not crazy enough. The final saga revelations just keep rolling in and I cannot get enough. I really want to see your predictions for what exactly he will say in the comments. As always, I'm Slice of Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.